Hi and welcome to my channel, my name is Magnus and today we're going to start to talk about automation. And I got the question like, do we need all of this like Ansible, Netbox, etc, etc? And the simple answer is no. But it depends on what you see as automation. I mean, it is a bit automation if you like import the CSV file and create objects. There is automation if you configure with Postman. There is automation if you do like basic script with Python. So I was planning to show you uh, a simple Python script that one of my colleagues did help me with. Um, I don't know how to script. So we did do the most basic basic. Yes, so you get the feeling on what you could do. So instead of doing this like management session, or this management plane, I will just install, um, I will run some Python script on this box. So we have our virtual machine here. So we're gonna start with installing an application called Virtual Studio Code, and this is uh, free to use. So I have already downloaded it, so let's just install it. So when you have installed the application, Either you create a new file, but I have already got the file from one of my colleagues, Jonas. Thank you. So this is just a very basic piece of code. And before you bash it, <laughs> no, it's not bash, it's Python. Uh, but before you say anything, yes, I'm fully aware that you shouldn't use like the login, add and publish and install in the same but this is only to make it as simple as possible, just to show you how what you can do and what the possibilities are. So when we have installed this one, we see already here that we are like referring to libraries called, in this case called requests. And we are missing stuff that we need to add here. So first of all, we need to have an interpreter. So we need to have Python. So we need to install Python, so we can do like this. And this, this is a Windows machine, so it will open like the, the Windows store. So just get, and this will install uh, the possibilities for us to use Python. So this will act like a plugin within the application. So now we should be able to select uh, Python. We see here that we can select Python 3.10. So that part is done. So what do we need to do more? Well, we need to open our um, checkpoint uh, console to enable uh, APIs. We need to enter the, the URL here. And I will show you what this is actually based on. But we open this one first. Ah, so <laughs> now it's a bit bigger. So uh, you see down here that we have Python installed. So that's great. So what we need to do now is to create a user. So we will create a user called uh, API user, API underscore user. We will give it a password. Test one, two, three, four, exclamation mark. And we will turn this off and we will allow it to read write all. Uh, so publish. We also need to enable the box to accept API calls. So if we press uh, blades, management APIs, and we accept this from all IP addresses that can be GUI clients or all, depending on your preference, but I would suggest the GUI clients and publish and i don't know if you did miss it but we need to run uh, api restart on the box itself so we will open um, cli to the box uh, so cp management expert api restart so this will uh, restart the API service on the management server. Okay, that's done. Uh, so we have here, 
we have a policy, we have a management station. So now we need to fill in within the script uh, some parts. So I will do like this. So first of all, we need to put in the URL of the management station uh, or the domain. So here we need to put and uh, fill in uh, 192. 168.1.200 and this is the IP address of the management station then we need to put in the, the username so API user and test 1234 exclamation mark so you see here like it's it's uh, referring to the credential it's referring to urls and that's why we have like the url specified within uh, within the script and you see here that this is a login and for example here you have an add host then it's a different uh, different call so you see here web api slash add host and i will show you where you actually see and find this ones but first, let's just fill in all the URLs here. Like this. And here. And I already uh, cheated a bit. But here you have the policy name. So you see here that the main office. And this is the policy name that we need to have. So I think that's all of the URLs we need to have. And it's also um, the credential that we needed to have. So what this script will do is that it will do the, the web API and log in with this credential. When that is done, it will add a host that is test host IP address, this one. So it, it will do this one. And after that, it will publish this, uh, this change. And then it will install this policy that is called main office. So that's what the script will do. So how do you actually find all of this? Well, then you have, if you search for checkpoint API reference, then you have like a website like this, then you need to know like what API version do you actually have? And this depends on your, uh, your management station. So we are running R81.10, uh, not HFA 79. So we have 1.8. So that changed to 1.8. And we are running the API via web services. So this is this, this one. So the first one that we are doing is that we log in. So here you have the request URL. Let's see if I can do like this. So here I have the request URL. So post this one. So this is referring to this URL. Then it's required username and password or an API key. And we have username and password as credential. So that's more or less what is required to log in. Then you can add a lot more stuff here, like which domain, if you want to have read only, if you want to add a session description, etc., etc. So you can do a lot more. And down here, you have examples. So see, this is how you should write it. And this is how we have written here. User, API, user, password. So, so it's the same. Uh, and if we want to add a host, then we need to do like this network object host add host. If we scroll up here, then we have post this, uh, this HTTPS. So here we have that URL, the IP address, web API add host, add host. And then you have, uh, what we want to do we want to add a host and what is required here name is required ip address is required that's the only thing that is required then we can add more stuff if we want to 
so we can add uh, groups or uh, colors or whatever. And here is an example on how you do this uh, add host and iPad SS. So it's name. So, so this is the important part, so to say, that is listed like this. And as you see, it's listed like this. So name and then test host IP address and, and IP address. And then you have the publish and then you will find the publish in the reference guide as well. And here you have an example on how, how a publish should look. So this is more as simple as it's possible uh, can be. So we actually need a few more things within, uh, within this application. So we need to install something called request here. So we are importing an HTTP, uh, HTTP library for Python. So import requests. So this is a module, so to say. And if you hold over here, you see that the source payloads, it's, it's missing. So it uh, could not be resolved. So we want to install this one. Let me try to run it then. Ah, now I get my terminal. <laughs> I didn't see where it was. Uh, like this. Sorry. So you see here, we get an error. So the error that we, we are missing a module called request. So to install this, this specific module, we do uh, pip install request. And this will uh, download what we need. And it's okay. So this was finished. So let's see then. Uh, and we will add the object called let's host under here. We don't have a test host right now. So we will do like this. We will do uh, play. And hopefully it works. So we see here already that the object test host has been added. And we see that the policy installation is now going for the main office and it's now done. And then you can you can check all the output here what it has actually done. So it um, if you notice here it's unverified HTTPS request, and just to to reference that here, we have actually verify equals false because we don't have any certificate or or like actually checking the stuff. So that's why it says um, uh, unverified. But um, yeah, we have added this test host. So you see here that this last modifier by API user. And yes, to show you, uh, I think it's in the audit logs. So here we see the login from the API user. So internal password. Then we see that it's created an object. So it created an object called test host with its IP address and then it did publish and then it did install the policy. And if, if I do like this again now, we haven't really built in any like uh, verifications and so on. I mean, you want to to like check like yeah this is already existing this does not need to happen but if if we refresh here again we see that uh, the user did log in it did not publish it did not create the object but it did still install the policy so when you're doing automation of some sort you need to you need to be aware of what happens if you run the script multiple times you need to be aware of um if if you do this a thousand times in a row in a quick uh like add one by one it's not really smart <laughs> maybe you should 
batch in it then. Maybe you should have like a, a big list of hosts. Or maybe you should maybe you should collect the hosts from a database. Netbox. So so this is what I wanted to, to show with this. Yes, you're able to do automation. You can do it uh, pretty basic. But if you want to do automation for like real, you need to, to reference different objects. You need like a source of truth. You need a database where all your cool stuff is that you can collect and gather from the, the orchestrator and then push into the devices. It's not really efficient to do like multiple hosts here and one by one. That, that would not be faster than just doing it here. I mean, a reason why you can do it like as simple as this is you, you abstract the checkpoint layer. You don't need to be aware of how the checkpoint smart console even look like. You can do it from here. So you can do like a web front end that push in objects to the, to the checkpoint uh, uh, smart console. But what I want to do with this theory is more or less use a database and then use Ansible to, or, or Python or whatever, something to collect from this database and then push it in. So I, I think you will like it. I, could be cool. <laughs> I hope so, at least. <laughs> this code is not meant for production. This code is just meant for this test. And we still need to do the workflow that you have in regular checkpoint. So you need to log in, you need to create your objects, you need to publish your objects, and then you need to install the policy. And if you're doing automation, it's very easy to just like press, press in a lot of stuff, but it gets more complicated when you're going to start to do verifications. And yeah, automation is rabbit hole. So you need to think about what you want to automate and why. So I think that's it for this video. I hope you did like it and uh, hope to see you in the next one. Take care.